Alright! That's the sound of war! And stay ye not, but pursue after your enemy and smite the highmost of them. Fall upon them! is right before your eyes and you can't ignore it. The truth has been right up under your nose this whole time. And that's the man with the fur. Who is the man with the fur? BKA Potiphar. BKA Hollow Fur Nest. BKA Fair Row. BKA the Pharisee. It's none other than Paul, the wolf in sheep clothing. This is the reason why Jacob covered himself with hair. It was pointing to one of his own children, Benjamin. And from Benjamin came the apostate Paul. This is the reason why John the Baptist, who is a type and shadow of Paul, he was an innocent type and shadow of Paul. John the Baptist, the man with all the churches, this is the reason why he covered himself with hair. He covered himself with camel's hair. Think of that. Think of camel's hair. This is going into the mantle he stole out of Arabia. This man tried to steal the mantle of the last and final messenger, the prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Tap Esau on the shoulder and tell him, there's someone that knows the Bible better than you. Tap Nathaniel on the shoulder and tell him, there's someone who knows the Bible better than all of y'all. It's going to take boldness to get this truth out. Okay? Muhammad Ali said, I am the greatest. And I truly believe right here in the house of David, we have the greatest revelation of Paul okay we have the truth right here in the house of David and the house of David is like the man who drew his bow at random and spotted the king of Israel and got him right between the joints of his harness and took down the king of Israel and the king of Israel is none other than your boy Paul okay that's where the church has failed. They have failed to spot the wolf in sheep clothing. That's where the Israelite camps failed. They failed to spot the wolf in sheep clothing coming out of the desert. Okay. Jesus told us all of the red flags and we failed to take heed. He said, beware. You only say beware when there's a dog. When there's a dog. Get it? God dog. <laughs> See, D-O-G, G-O-D, okay? I always knew it was something to that. God dog. <laughs> Paul was the dog. Paul was the wolf that Jesus was trying to warn us about. Now, this is the gospel that has to go all over the world, starting right here in the house of David. I know it makes the so-called Jew mad when he hears that the house of David is Islam. The prophet Muhammad is seen all through the Bible. If you open up your eyes, he is the prophet that was spoken of in Deuteronomy 33 and 2. He is the prophet that was spoken of in Deuteronomy and 18. He is the prophet that was spoken of in Isaiah in 60. He is the prophet that is spoken of in Isaiah 42. He is the prophet that is spoken of in Habakkuk 3 and 3. This is the one whom John the Baptist said that is mightier than I. He's going to baptize you with fire. Okay. He wasn't talking about Jesus because Jacob has already had his hold on Esau's heel, okay? He wasn't talking about Jesus. He was talking about the prophet Muhammad who is going to baptize you 
in the chastisement, in the fire, in the blazing fire. There's no other holy book on planet earth that talks about hell more than the Quran. This is the fire that John the Baptist was speaking of. He said, there's going to be one mightier than I. Now, Jesus said John the Baptist was more than a prophet. Jesus said that John the Baptist was the greatest prophet, but it says whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John the Baptist. Now, Paul, he believed to be that God. OK, he believed to be the least. He said he was the least. He said he was the last. But there's someone who's greater than even Paul. Why? Because he's the Gentile messenger. He really is the least. Seeing he is an Israelite. Paul was an Israelite. Okay. Jesus was telling us of the prophet Muhammad and John the Baptist was telling us of the prophet Muhammad. Now the American Christian, he can't stand Islam. He can't stand the prophet Muhammad. You want to piss a Christian off? Just say Muhammad. Okay. Just say Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon his family. Now, in Matthew 21, 43, therefore, say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. This is going into real repentance. In Christianity, they have false repentance. That is one man dying for all of your hiccups. One man paying the price for all of your mess. That is what you call false repentance. Real repentance is when you confess your sins to the most high and then you change your walk. That's real repentance. And in Islam, we are home of the way of the Lord. And that is the real repentance. This is seen in Ezekiel chapter 18. OK, when a man does that, which is right, he shall live. When a man does that, which is wicked, he shall die. Every man is going to die for their own sins. That's not true in the New Testament. OK, because somebody paid the price for you, courtesy of Paul. Paul is the one who brought us this garbage. And that's why Paul is the enemy of God. But it is written. Judah's hands shall be in the neck of his enemies, just like Judah, her hand was in the neck of her enemy. Hallow for this. Read the Apocrypha, okay? There's more to the Bible. You need to learn, you need to read, you need to study, because you had the zunk this whole time. Christianity has a Lord they call Jesus. He was a miracle worker. He performed all type of healings. The church of today is trusting in the pharmacist. They're trusting in the doctor. They have no power. All they can do is run their mouth. That's all the Christian can do and take your money. Jesus said the kingdom will be taken from you. Taken means taken away. God gives and he takes away. Oh, Israelite, y'all read this passage and to y'all it reads, the kingdom shall be given to you, black man. No, it says the kingdom shall be taken from you and the kingdom has already been taken from you, black man. OK, I'm in agreement that the real Israelites were black. OK, but the kingdom was taken. It was taken from the Israelites and he's telling the Pharisees the kingdom is going to be taken from you. Now, they didn't have the kingdom. The Pharisees wasn't running nothing, okay? They wasn't running nothing but their mouth. They was under the Romans. He was telling the Pharisees of the future. Who are the Pharisees? Who are the little boys with the fur? The Christians, okay? The man with the fur, the man with all of the hair, the man who stole Jesus' inheritance. Pause. Jesus said, he that hath eaten bread with me, has lifted up his heel against me. According to the Bible, Jacob was grabbing a hold of Esau's heel. All this is Genesis 
The serpent's son's head will be crushed. That's going into Saul. Okay? But the son of the woman will be bruised. His heel will be bruised. And Jesus, peace be upon him, was the son that was bruised. Not on a cross, but by a betrayal. So when Jesus said the kingdom is going to be taken from the Pharisees, he was talking about the Christian nation today, right now, who's on top, who is the largest religion and has the strongest military. Jesus was prophesying that the kingdom is going to be taken from Paul. And it's going to happen one day and one day soon. And it's going to go to David. It's going to go to the prophet Muhammad. Is going to go to the nation of Islam. Is you mad or is you mad or not? But it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. God said in 2 Ezra 2 and 10, Thus saith the Lord unto Ezra, Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would have given unto Israel. Now pause and meditate on that. He's telling Ezra, to tell his new people that he's going to give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which he would have given unto Israel. Now, God is dissing Israel. Now, this scripture, you won't hear Nathaniel bring out. You won't hear no Israelite camp on the loudspeaker bringing this out on the streets. This is a total diss to Israel. God is telling the prophet Ezra that he's going to give the kingdom to his new people which he would have given to the Bini Israel, okay? He's taking it from them. And then Jesus comes along in Matthew 21, 43, and he says, therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Who was he speaking to? Matthew 21 and 45. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, they perceived that he spake of them he was talking to the pharisees he was talking to paul's church the man with the fur potiphar pharaoh hollow Fernes, the wolf in sheep clothing the fair receive all of those names and terms have hair on them they have the fur on them now you you gotta wake up you gotta wake up the Israelite camps have failed to decode the Bible. Now, we know the white man has failed to decode the Bible as well. Okay? That is obvious. It's obvious. <laughs> it's obvious, man. <laughs> All of the fundamental teachings and the basic core values of Christianity came to us from him, from Esau. God's hatred for Esau. It's not going into a skin tone. No, it's in his idolatry. It's in his associating partners with God. The real hatred that God has for Esau is not going into a skin tone. It's going into a religion. Now, wake up, black man. Wake up, black man. God loves Jacob, but he hates Esau. That's going into how God loves Islam and he hates Christianity. This is why he tells you in the book of Deuteronomy to love Esau. Love Esau. Love your brother Esau. If Esau was the devil, why would he tell you to love him? Okay. We love the Christian. We hate his sin. We love the Christian fervently, but we hate his sin because his sin is the most dangerous sin out there that is associating partners with God okay so loving Esau is going into loving the fellow Christians now I speak the truth in love we need someone to jar you out of that thinking we need someone to bring the fire okay to wake you up out of your slumber that's all this is in this house it's nothing but tough love. We don't hate the Christian, okay? We just hate his sin. We hate his sin of idolatry. Going back to 2 Ezra 2.10. Thus saith the Lord unto Ezra, tell my new people. 
that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem. That's telling you the kingdom was going to be taken away from Israel. Now, keep in mind, Paul came up and he stole the kingdom. He proclaimed to be the last and final Gentile messenger. Okay, so right now, the Israelites have the kingdom for the simple fact that it's still under Benjamin. Remember, Benjamin was always mightier than Judah. The first king of Israel was who? A man of Benjamin. The apostle who is considered the last messenger in his own eyes is who? Paul. There's always someone greater than Jesus. Jesus trying to tell you John the Baptist was greater than him. Okay? Benjamin was always greater than Joseph. Go back to the beginning. There was two beloved sons. Joseph was the one who was falsely murdered. Okay? That's what opened up my eyes to know that Jesus Christ was not murdered. Okay, because of the type and shadow of Joseph. Everything you see in Joseph, you see in Jesus. Okay, and Joseph was falsely murdered. Now we have another son who is at home. He is the one that is the favorite son now. Okay, this is the devil's favorite son, Benjamin. Okay, he was the one that got to stay home with his daddy. His dad had a fit when they asked for Benjamin. And think about it. Jacob, his name means supplanter. His name means deceiver. And what makes the devil mad is when you expose Paul. It's when you expose Paul. Second Ezra 2.10. Oh, I'm going to piss you off with this verse. I'm going to keep going on and on and on till your camp leader call me. Break down Second Ezra 2.10, Israelite. It says, thus saith the Lord unto Esdras, tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would have given unto Israel. Now, did you know, my brother, he was talking to the heathen. He was talking to the heathen. Let's go to second Esdras chapter two and let's go to verse 33. I Esdras. Received a charge of the Lord upon the Mount Or that I should go unto Israel. But when I came unto them, they set me at naught. That means they set me at nothing. They had no regard for the messenger. And despised the commandment of the Lord like they had no regard for John the Baptist. They had no regard for the prophet Isa. Okay. The Bible says he came to his own and his own received him not. Verse 34, and therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen. Now, why is the God of Israel and none else? Why is the God of Joel 2.27? Why is the God who has only dealt with Israel and none else? Okay, the God who declared his statutes unto Jacob and has not shown himself unto no other nation. Why is the God who showed his word to Jacob, his statutes and judgments to Israel and has not dealt so with any other nation talking to the heathen? That's what you got to ask your camp leader. That's why they won't bring this scripture out. The Israelite camps, they have a million plus videos on John 316. They have zero messages on 2 Ezra 2.10. They have zero messages on Matthew 21.43. They hiding some, bruh. Let's go back to that. I'm going to show you that. Go back to that. Second Ezra 2 and 33. Let's go back to the top. I, Ezra, received a charge of the Lord upon the Mount Oreb that I should go unto Israel. But when I came unto them, they set me at naught and despised the commandment of the Lord. That sounds like Israel. That's how we were. 34. And therefore, I say unto you, O ye heathen, that hear and understand. Look for your shepherd. Now, David was a shepherd. That's why I always teach David was a type and shadow of the prophet Muhammad because he was a shepherd as well. Peace and blessings be upon him. 
He shall give you everlasting rest. Why? Because he's going to give you the everlasting word. For he is nigh at hand. He's almost here. That shall come in the end of the world. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. God is talking about taking something that belonged to Israel and giving it to another nation who is heathen, who is Gentile, and that nation is the nation of Ishmael, which goes into the religion of Islam. It doesn't matter your color, your creed, your race. Regardless of all of that, if you are a Muslim, you are accepted in the beloved. God's going to give you one of his chosen people. He's going to give you a Jew and he's going to give you a Christian and he's going to say, this is your ransom. This is your rescue from the fire. OK, so there you have it. I just wanted to continue emphasizing that God said that he would take the kingdom from Israel and he will give it to his new people. OK, people who have not seen him with bodily eyes, people who never had prophets, people who never had any type of miracles. OK, this is going into the nation of Ishmael, because in Islam, they only have one and last final messenger and that is the prophet muhammad he is the seal of the prophets that's why when you go to second ezra's 124 it says what shall i do unto thee O jacob thou judah wouldest not obey me i will turn me to what other nations and unto those will i give my name that's allah that they may keep my statutes, that's the Quran, seeing you have forsaken me, Israel, I will forsake you also, Israel, when you desire me to be gracious unto you, I shall have no mercy upon you, whensoever ye shall call upon me, I will not hear you, for you have defiled your hands with blood, and your feet are swift to commit manslaughter, now that is going into the Christian's and the false murder of Jesus Christ. That is going into what Paul did from the tribe of Benjamin, whose symbol is the wolf. Ye have not as it were forsaken me, but your own selves, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Almighty Lord, have I not prayed you as a father his sons, as a mother her daughters, and a nurse her young babes, that you would be my people, that you would be a people that's high above all nations. You know, Israel was that. Deuteronomy 7 and 6, okay? They used to be on top. And then these Israelites, man, they cherry pick the Quran. They'll go to the scripture in the Quran where it says, I bestowed my favor upon Israel and, and chose you before all other nations. Yeah, past tense. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so cold. He's telling you, yeah, Israel used to have it going on, okay? They used to. Yesteryear's glory, yesterday's testimony that you would be my people and I should be your God, that you would be my children and I should be your father. I gather you together, Israel, as a hen gather her chickens under her wings. But now what shall I do unto you? I will cast you out from my face. This happened in 70 CE when Israel was cast out of Jerusalem, just like Jesus cast out the devil and cast out the devil and cast out the devil. Israel was cast out of their own land like the devil. Going on, when you offer unto me, I will turn my face from you, from your solemn feast days, your new moons and your circumcisions. I have forsaken. So why y'all celebrating that? Why is y'all celebrating that? He said, I am going to forsake that. 32. I've sent unto you my servants, the prophets, whom you have taken and slain and tore their bodies in pieces, whose blood I will require of your hands, saith the Lord. Now, this is going into Israel killing all of the prophets. And they also killed Jesus on biblical record. They couldn't get Jesus. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Jesus from that sacrifice. Okay. He saved him from that sacrifice. 
going on. Thus saith the Almighty Lord, your houses is desolate. I will cast you out as the wind doth stubble. And your children shall not be fruitful. This is the reason why Jesus went to that fig tree. And we all know you can Google it. What does the fig tree represent? The fig tree represents Israel. This is seen in Hosea. This is seen in Amos. Israel is the fig tree. And Jesus went to that fig tree and he cursed it. Okay. And wasn't nothing on it but leaves. And he said, oh, Israel got to leave. <laughs> they got to leave. Okay. And he cursed it. Jesus cursed Israel. He cursed the fig tree. Okay. Going on. And your children shall not be fruitful. This is not talking about Israel in Matthew 21, 43, because Israel, God promised, would not be fruitful. John the Baptist couldn't get them to bear fruit and the prophet Esau could not get them to bear fruit. Peace be upon them. Your children shall not be fruitful. I just want you to hear that. I want that to sink in. Your children shall not be fruitful for they have despised my commandment. And done the thing that is evil before me. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come. Now who was in the land of Israel first? The so-called Jew or the Palestinian? The Palestinians were. The Palestinians still is in Israel's place today. Okay? They was the replacement for Israel. The Muslim was the replacement for Israel. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, which not having heard of me, yet shall believe me. To whom I have shown no signs, yet they shall do that I have commanded them. This is not talking about the northern kingdom. This is not talking about the southern kingdom. This is talking about another race who never had anything to do with God. They have seen no prophets Yet they shall call their sins to remembrance. And that's what we do in Islam. We are constantly begging God to forgive us. Forgiveness don't come that easy in Islam like it does in Christianity. Okay. In Christianity, all your sins are gone. In Islam, we are calling our sins to remembrance and we're acknowledging them. Verse 37, I take to witness the grace of the people to come. Whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the thing that I say. This is speaking about the nation of Islam. Get over it. Get over it, Israelites. You had all these false teachers that tickled your ears, made you think that you had something going. OK, like I always say, being an Israelite is like finding fake gold. You think it's real. You take it to the jewelers and they like, nah, bro, this this ain't real. But you thinking it's real. You thinking it's real. And you can't accept the fact that this gold is not real. OK, here's another one. When you fall in love with a girl, you and your girl, y'all got it going on. Y'all got all these kids together. OK, it used to be all good in the hood. OK, now she don't want to have anything to do with you. OK, she's not all over you no more. As a matter of fact, she filed a divorce. She moved out. OK, and you constantly just keep trying to get her to sit on the edge of the bed with you. And you constantly just blowing her phone up. She's not replying. She not texting. She don't want to have anything to do with you. You still got her on your screensaver, my guy. OK, but she don't want to have anything to do with you. That is the same thing with the brothers that are in these Israelite camps. God has moved on from Israel. OK, he went to another nation. He constantly keeps telling you that in Isaiah, even Paul told you that Isaiah was very bold. That he went to a people that wasn't called by his name. Okay. The truth of the matter is no matter how you try to switch it up and flip it up and say Israel is assimilated into all nations and, and all that bull crap. You're not going to get past the truth, my brothers. You need to suck it up. Let her go. 
Come on home to Islam. You'll be a chosen people again. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.